Hi, welcome back to Real Auto Reports right here at a fairly windy Real Auto Ranch. So we hope you'll pardon the wind noise for this Real First Impressions video on the 2015 Infiniti QX60. Now, if you haven't been keeping up with all the Infiniti name changes, we'll talk a little bit about that in this First Impressions and in the Real video coming up down the road. So let's jump in and do our walk around. All right, so from the front, what you're gonna notice here are some nice character lines in the nose. This QX60, which used to be the JX, if you were wondering, is a nice mid-size to full-size SUV. It is an all-wheel drive, not a full-time four-wheel drive or a, a full four-by-four type of set. So it is an all-wheel drive setup like you would expect from an Infiniti. And you can see the character lines coming off this A pillar here and through the nose and down into the Infinity grille, into this design in the nose. You can also see a character line that will show you coming from the side, coming into the front headlight. There's a little bit of a lip here. It's all nice and soft curves. And the bonnet here, or the hood, fits right in line with the top lip, giving you a nice edge here for the design of the front grille and the front fascia. I like the way it comes across, and you have this very soft, and you can see the dust out here at Real Auto Reports, this very soft line down the hood where the center line is on the vehicle. It's just a very light detail, very hard to see here in the video. Of course, very large badging because, I mean, you want people to know it's an infinity, right? And you have your fog lights and of course your, your high intensity headlights and all of that. It's a nice looking vehicle. And what I noticed is that this front part of the bumper actually overhangs more than the lower grille down there where the air intake is. So there's a lot of nice little insets and bumps here, but it's not an angular vehicle. It's a soft and, and flowing vehicle in its design. And you'll see that as we go around and look at the side. Okay, so from the side, you can start to see the size of this QX60. Remember, used to be the JX. You haven't gone crazy. They did rename everything in 2014 model year. So in the 15, we're keeping the naming and basically the design. If you looked at the 14 and the 13 when they announced the JX, you, it's not, it's not going to be radically different. It is still in its first cycle of design. We probably will see a refresh here in a couple years. And it's a, I like it. Uh, frankly, I think it's a nice change from some of the other vehicles that are out there. As I mentioned, there's this strong character line here about at the belt line of the vehicle. And then you have the flared out plastic skirts here down at the bottom with the front and rear doors. And you can see the little notch there so that when the rear door opens, you don't catch it. You have a lovely kind of curve here and it really is kind of like that. It's got a wave to it. And then the whole vehicle kind of looks like it's pouncing forward. It gives it that spirit of motion, that sports car kind of performance vehicle look, because that's what the Infiniti brand has been all about, all the way back to the now Q sedans that used to be the G sedans. And I like it a lot. It is the 3.5 liter, so it is the older, smaller V6 engine in terms of the liters, because as many people know, they've gone up to three sevens in a lot of the Infiniti vehicles. But it is 265 horsepower and 248 foot-pounds of torque. Now, one detail I wanna point out are these nice long roof rails that are fairly low, compact, so that they don't get a lot of wind drag. But the other one is this lovely curve right here in the back. It's just a little detail. It's not really functional for any reason, but you can see that there's a little ridge here and a little detail back here. And it just kind of gives you that fluid motion like it's in a wake of air or water and it's just cruising through. And I just like this detail. You won't find it on a lot of other vehicles and it definitely stands out on this QX60. Let's take a look at the back and then we'll go inside and under the hood. So stay tuned. 
All right, so again, in this windy, blustery Real Auto Ranch, we have the back of the QX60. Now, this is a fairly compact back design. You don't have a big lip on the bumper here, so it keeps the vehicle nice and tidy in its look. Some nice chrome details here for the branding and the badging. You have, uh, you know, the license plate framed here by the chrome bright work. We're not gonna call it necessarily real chrome, but you, you get the impression here. You have your park assist back here, and of course your rear camera as well. You can lock the vehicle back here with the intelligent key that it has, or you can open the power rear hatch. Now the power rear hatch will give you access to the load floor here, and you'll see that we have the third row in this vehicle. Now, with the headrests up, you're gonna find from a first impressions that in the back it's gonna be a little harder to see out of. They give you this little window here. It's not too obstructing and the blind spots aren't too bad, but you can drop the headrest down when you're not having people sitting back there. And with two flips of the latch, you can drop that third row. Now the nice feature is, so that's manual, flip them down real quick, anybody can do it. But to get them back up is always harder and they have these power buttons on either side of the vehicle that will bring them back up here in a few seconds. Now, well, okay, yeah, you get the impression. Maybe not one or two, maybe 10 or 15, but we've got the power back row. Now, if you're wondering how much room you can actually fit back here with the third row up, because that's a lot of people's concerns. You're not gonna take seven people to the airport unless you're using a, the roof rack, okay? But you can get a full-size roller board, you know, rolling suitcase, full-size, check luggage, you know, 50 pounds, 70 pounds, yes, you'll pay overage then, and a carry-on, like a legal carry-on roller next to it. But that's about it with this third row up. Put the third row down, you'll get five people's worth of luggage in this vehicle. So just keep that in mind. That's kind of your balancing act. The seven seater is really meant for passengers, not passengers and luggage. You'll have to go up to the QX80 you know, the big Mamu, the one that used to be called the QX56, if you want the optimal amount of luggage space. But you may still have to use the roof rack with that one too. It depends on how heavy you pack. But it's a neat vehicle. You can shut it from the back of the lift gate here. And you can also open this lift gate from the key as well as you'd expect. So I like it. I think it's a tidy design. You have your nice little spoiler here, third brake light as you'd expect. And uh, well, it does everything you'd expect an SUV to do. So let's go take a look inside. So from the driver's seat here in the inside of the QX60, for 2015, again, you're not gonna see a whole lot of differences. They haven't done any updates that we're aware of when looking at the Infinity press room. So it's gonna look like the 14 and well, even the JX when it was called that in the 13. I think that it's a pretty cool vehicle though because you have a lot of nice steering wheel controls. You have clearly designed and easy to read gauges and placement of things. You have a lot of information right here, including your traction control, the lift gate, whether or not that lift gate is power or not on and off, your heated steering wheel, your blind spot, monitoring notification, all of the sound, all of that gets turned on and off here. And you have variable headlights that will, the height will go up and down. We see that also on the Toyota brand and uh, the BRZ we looked at not that long ago. Of course, you have your door controls. The only one that's a little awkward in the first impression is how far forward on the door edge and how low this memory seat is, but it is a two function memory seat. And the only other thing that's a little odd is that one is in front of two, so you have to reach farther forward for the one setting, which I think is a little odd because you kind of would think that if that's the setting that's used most, you'd want it closest to the driver so they could press it easiest. But, you know, just little idiosyncrasies there. This does have the lovely light colored interior that is two-tone with the wood and the soft satin accents that go around pretty much all the trim. What you'll notice in the gauges, which is pretty cool, is that it's a hammered satin trim that goes around the gauges. It's kind of like a hammered finish that goes around and it gives it just that little bit of richness. It's a nice vehicle. It's well laid out and it's subtle. It's, it's reserved. It's not a flashy vehicle. And that's kind of what Infinity has banked on for a long time. Classy, sophisticated, well-designed with some soft curves in the interior, but nothing too crazy or wild. And I like the vehicle. You have a small 
sunroof here in the front for the front passengers. And then starting right above the rear passenger's heads, you have a massive rear panoramic roof that goes all the way back behind the, uh, the rear, the seven seat. It goes all the way back to the third row. So it is a nice interior. It's one that we look forward to interacting with more, including the sliding second row so that you can give your third row passengers more or less space, depending on how mean you are uh, or how nice your third row passengers are. So it's a vehicle that uh, from a first impressions interior perspective is pretty nicely appointed and worth a longer look in the real video. But for now, we've got to go check out what powers this bad boy under the hood. All right, so under the hood, what you're going to find is the Infiniti 3.5 liter V9. No, I'm kidding, it's a V6. It even says it right here on the bonnet. I've been made fun of because I've gotten some of these engines wrong. And on occasion, when you see all these cars, sometimes you make some assumptions and uh, you shouldn't. So it is a V6, it is 3.5 liters, it is 265 horsepower and 248 foot pounds of torque. You don't really care about how fast a big SUV like this goes zero to 60, but we'll flash it up for, on the screen for you anyway, just so you know. It's going to get about 19 miles per gallon in town, which is not bad for a big seven-seater with all-wheel drive. Remember, this vehicle will come in a non-all-wheel drive configuration with the 3.5 liter. You can also get a hybrid version in the various configurations as well. So there are other versions of this QX60 and it really is competing with vehicles like the Highlander, but in a luxury brand package. So it would also compete with the Lexus brand as well with all of their various SUVs, some of which we have looked at here at Real Auto Reports like the LX450H. Now, this vehicle here will feel pretty powerful. The engine and transmission are good. Now this has a continuously variable transmission, but it does have an updated shift mode, an updated shift software rather, I should say, for 2015. So you might notice that it drives a little bit differently than the 2014 or 13 if you own one or have test driven one. But generally, the experience is going to be pretty good but it does still have that kind of hum that a continuously variable transmission will uh, basically facilitate because it'll stay at one RPM for quite a while when you're accelerating and accelerating hard. Some people that just that sound doesn't sit with them well, but all in all, the sound inside the car is not all that loud with this 3.5 liter because it's not like some of the performance S types on the QX60 or the Q60 sedans where they're looking for the kind of performance rumble in the cabin. This vehicle is actually very quiet and the motor noise is not very loud inside. We are going to take this for a spin and tell you what our first impressions, driving impressions are on this. So let's check it out. All right, so for this real first impressions driving experience in the Infiniti QX60 we have here, we're getting going here at Real Auto Ranch. And as we get going on the gravel portion of our lot, what you notice right away is that it handles the gravel well and bumps in general. The first impressions I have on this vehicle is that the ride is quite nice. It's not too soft, it's not too stiff. It doesn't give you kind of that bouncy feeling in the back, not that I've noticed anyway. And from a first impressions perspective, it's fairly quiet. Even when you really get on the engine, you hear it from a performance perspective, which is part of the Infinity brand's DNA, but you don't seem to really get inundated by noise constantly. If we softly accelerate here, you hear a little bit of that Infinity V6 3.5 liter sound, but it's not obnoxious. I think in general, from a real first impressions, I'm not sure about the steering yet. It seems a little heavy, and when you first go to park, it seems like it takes a lot of effort to get this into a parking space, but we'll definitely give you more impressions in our real video, the real review. So make sure you stay tuned for that. But in general, if I had to give you an impression just right now, if you were asking me in the dealer showroom, how does it drive? I would say it drives well, it's sure footed. The all wheel drive system is slightly noticeable when you turn sharply, 
but it does have an excellent turning radius and good road characteristics, if not a little bit on the heavy steering side. So that's what I have to say. Also, keep in mind it is a CVT, so you do get that kind of, yeah, that kind of where it has the same RPM all the time. We'll have the real wrap up coming up next, so stay tuned. So that's the Real First Impressions video edition on this 2015 QX60 from Infinity. This is, uh, well, it used to be the JX35. And in the renaming convention in 2014's model year, it went to the QX60. So that's the little mystery there. In 2015, of course, they're keeping their new naming model. And this has the 3.5 liter V6 engine. It's gonna be 265 horsepower and about 248 foot pounds of torque. And remember the fuel economy is gonna be right about 19 in city and 26 out on the freeway with a 22 mile per gallon combined. This vehicle is not cheap at about $56,000 as tested, just a little bit over. And it is a seven passenger vehicle, but it is competing with a lot of vehicles that have a lot of similar features and some with more room like the new totally redesigned Toyota Highlander that now seats eight, not just seven with the third row option. So there's a lot of competition in this luxury segment, but Infinity does still give you that powerful kind of luxurious SUV in this mid-size to full-size category that is important to cross shop with the competition. From a first impressions perspective, we like the outside and the value for the money appears to be good given the other vehicles out on the market. However, if you are willing to go to a non-luxury brand like Toyota, you might be able to get similar function and feature for less price. So you'll want to shop it around. I'm Jonathan McGrew right here at Real Auto Ranch Real Auto Reports, and we will see you down the road for more videos, including the real video on this Infinity QX60. So make sure you join us.